Well, hello friends and welcome back to the channel again. Today, Joe and I are continuing our work on the addition, the A-frame addition that we're doing to our cabin. And I'm really excited because Lexi and James have decided to take Parker and Kellen for the night. They're having a sleepover. They are taking them to this really fun like laser tag place where they get to play arcade games and all kinds of stuff. So as you can imagine, the boys are super excited to get out of the cabin and have a change of scenery for once. And Joe and I are excited to have a night to ourselves like what is that right as soon as they left as soon as they pulled out of the driveway I was like it's so quiet it's so quiet I mean other than the chickens and the dogs it's super quiet and then tomorrow if the weather holds out we as in me and Joe are going to attempt the river again and head up to our remote cabin for the day as you guys might remember from our 4th of July weekend video we attempted to take the whole family out to the remote cabin for the weekend and we had some issues with the boat, some fuel issues, and we had to turn around and come home. Had a couple scary incidences on the river with hitting a sandbar, just some craziness. <laughs> we all made it out alive and we just haven't attempted it since. But we got the boat running again, all is well, and I told Joe, I would prefer if him and I could go out to the cabin without the kids. You know, as a mom, it's, it's just this huge fear of mine for something to happen to the kids. I have this just overwhelming instinct, as we should as mothers, uh, to, and Joe does too, right? But for me, it's just, it's just pure anxiety in a situation like that. Um, it's a big river, it's got a swift current, and even though we're all wearing life jackets, I can't imagine if something ever happened to one of the kids. So I take it very seriously, and I said, take me up there, just me and you so I can see for myself that you know the route we're gonna take that we can get there and back safely and then and maybe then I might feel comfortable with attempting a family trip back to the remote cabin so we're gonna give it a shot I'm a little scared I'm not gonna lie to you guys I've, I've got this fear uh, because of what happened last time and I know that the only way to get over that fear is to hop in that boat and do it again uh, so that's what we're gonna do tomorrow today is 80 degrees. Yeah, y'all heard me right. It's 80 degrees up here in Alaska, you guys. I have all the windows open in the cabin, just trying to get some uh, airflow in here because as you can imagine, we don't have an air conditioner. So airflow is much needed on days like this, but there's not a cloud in the sky, no wind, the sun is shining bright, and Joe and I were like, this is a great time to get some of that work done on the addition. Well, as you guys can tell, we made some progress since our last video. We've got this one wall up and uh, we're getting ready to do the next one. As you just saw, Joe has the door framed out. So some of you have asked if I could explain the layout of this addition with where our cabin currently is. Something that has changed uh, since our last video is we actually came out here over coffee and we were sitting out here on this addition just talking about it and I'm thinking, you know, the current master bedroom comes off of the kitchen. So this addition comes off of the master bedroom. So this space was going to be our food storage space because as I shared with you on the last video, we have no closets, no pantry, nothing like that in the cabin. And uh, the problem with this being the food storage space is that the kids and anybody 
you know, that might be over visiting or whatever that wants to get some food or whatever would have to travel through our master bedroom to get out here to this food storage space. So I think what we're going to do, we talked about it today. I think we're actually going to make this addition our master bedroom. And then what is our master bedroom now will become the food storage space for the cabin, all the things where we have a place to keep all of our linens and all that good stuff that I shared with you on the last video. So this space is a little bit smaller than our master bedroom, but I'm not concerned with that. We can put our bed in here, our dresser, a couple nightstands. I can make it super cute. And what I like about it is that mine and Joe's space stays private and isn't traveled by everybody. And the new storage space will be the master bedroom, which will go right off of the kitchen, which would make more sense, right? If I'm cooking and I need a canned good or I need another roll of paper towels, I can just walk right in off the kitchen into the, st the storage space and not have to worry about going through the master bedroom to get there. So with it being so hot and sunny today, the mosquitoes are hiding somewhere. I don't know where they are, but they're not here. And it's just such a relief because you guys know we've been dealing with like crazy mosquitoes right now. It's just really nice not to be getting eaten alive. However, I did just get stung in the back. Do you guys know how awesome lavender essential oil is for your bug bites? It is almost like instant relief. We have these stashed all around the house in every glove box of every vehicle. It is just something that takes the itch away almost instantly. If you have any burns or anything like that, sunburns, bee stings, lavender essential oil, just straight up, just put a little on your finger, rub it in, and it takes the sting away. It takes the itch away. It's amazing, and it smells good too. Just give a little scratch. Just a little bit, Joe. I am right now. No, but you're just, you're just rubbing it. I need you to rub the oil on it. Oh, it feels good. Okay, thank you. We'll just keep this out here just in case we have any more stragglers. Some of you asked about this electrical stuff here, what we're gonna be doing with it. And we're just gonna be keeping it on the inside of the addition. So Joe's talked about maybe doing like a little utility closet or cupboard to kind of hide it. But this is the electrical for our solar system. So it's got our little box where we switch over from generator to our solar and that's what all this stuff is here. So instead of being on the exterior of the cabin now, it'll be on the inside in this addition room, which is gonna probably be our master bedroom now. So uh, we will just make some kind of enclosure there so that it's not so ugly, but it's gonna be staying on the inside. Yep. 
It's a door. Uh, it's a door hole. Needs a little trimming. Well, needs a little trimming, but it's a door hole, Joe. Look at that. Good job. You're so smart. There we go. So that's where the door is going to go. So this side will be facing the chicken coop and the solar panel. I'm really happy about this door because like I told you guys, we only have one door in the cabin right now and that's the front door. So this will be a second door to the cabin and we're gonna get a door similar to the one we have on the chicken coop that has the window panes in it to help bring in some more natural light into this room here. And then we're also gonna be removing this window and putting it on this wall of the addition.
right guys, we made it. <laughs> we made it to the remote cabin. Now, if we can make it home, that's gonna be another story. But for now, we're here. And I couldn't have asked for better weather. There's just no clouds. It's so warm. It's probably about 70 degrees today. And uh, we've brought Gunner with us. Everybody else is back home with Lexi and James, but we've got Gunner and it's just me and Joe. We have a hike up to the cabin now. Uh, thankfully, like I mentioned last time, James and Joe were able to clear a path up to the remote cabin from where we docked the boat so it's not as bad as it was when Joe first came out here he had to bushwhack the entire trail all the way up to the cabin so hopefully it's not too overgrown again and we can get up there and check out the cabin Gunner, go we brought our new lawnmower that we bought for the remote cabin so poor Joe is having to carry that box all the way down this trail but there's no way to get a four-wheeler in here or anything yet at this point uh, you know, and we would need a bigger boat anyways to get a four-wheeler out here to leave out here at the remote cabin. We just don't have that right now, so we're hoofing it through the woods. Even though it's like 70 degrees today, I got freezing traveling on the river. I mean, absolutely freezing. My, my, my hands were cold. I couldn't hardly move my hands. I was, you know, had the jitters. Maybe it was just a little bit of nerves because I was nervous about the trip out here because of what happened last time. Uh, but it was actually really cold. Even Joe said he was cold. So I'm hiking with my sweater on even though it's warm because of the mosquitoes. However, the mosquitoes actually aren't that bad today. I think it's because it's warm out. Joe, I cannot believe you had to cut through this whole trail. <gasps> this is far. Joe and I are both packing. There's definitely bears out here. This is completely <laughs> remote Alaska. There's like nothing out here, so. Oh, thankfully we have Gunner with us. He'll be a early warning system. Hopefully. This was just a quick trip today because Lexi has the boys. Uh, but next time we will be bringing the chainsaw with us and taking care of all these big logs that are in the trail. Taking a break? Yep. It's all uphill too. <sighs> it's all uphill. Yay, 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 yay! Right, you're supposed to let them know you're coming. Right? Oh. Yes, you don't want to sneak up on a bear, go. Joe. Go, go. Don't worry, Joe. I'll keep you safe. Go. Yay, yay, yay! Go. Yay, yay! Oh, snap. Ooh, it's a good thing you're walking in front. You can get all the spider webs. <laughs> it's, I know it's got little spikies on it, so don't want to touch that with your hands. Oh, the mosquitoes like it up here in the shade. Here's all the mosquitoes. No, Gunner, no. Don't eat that. It's got spikies on it. Bikes on that thing. Hey Joe, wait up! Don't leave me too far back here by myself now. Up here. I'm coming. Oh man, this brush is like really high. We made it. Yay, we made it to the cabin. Oh, there she is.
so remember when we were here this last winter, we were like, oh, it's gonna be so fun to go fishing right off the bank in front of the cabin. Um, so that's not gonna happen right now, you know, because down there you have all of like the big river, uh, I don't know what they are, river plants, and it's basically mush. My allergies are getting me, everything is blooming out here, so I probably sound super congested, but eventually we would like to build some type of little dock off of our bank right there so that we can moor up right to that dock right in front of the cabin, and then we could go right down there and we could fish in front of the cabin. But right now, uh, in order to do any fishing on this river, we would have to go back down to where the boat's docked and just kind of fish off the, off the boat. Oh, here she is. So this is a bunch of stuff that we brought, Joe and James brought out last time for the 4th of July weekend. Not all the soap, we have a bunch of extra storage stuff we're bringing out here, but just like the Berkey water filter, we had potatoes. You know, we were supposed to come out here with Lexi and James and the boys for the 4th of July weekend and that just didn't happen. But James and Joe did a trip prior to that weekend to bring the supplies up for us, a bunch of fireworks and everything. So <laughs> bless you. <laughs> that was one of the reasons we wanted to get back out here as soon as possible because we have all the fireworks, which can be a fire hazard. We didn't want to leave them out here in the cabin. Uh, and also a bunch of food that would have gone bad and we just didn't want to waste all that food. So we're going to bring all that home with us and, uh, you know, just check things out, but we made it. I am super excited that we made it. It wasn't that bad. Um, we had zero issues on the way out here. We didn't hit any sandbars this time, thank God. There was a bunch of floating logs and debris as the river is very high this summer because of all the rain, but um, we had no issues, so I, I couldn't be more grateful. Let's go check this place out. So if you're new here to the channel and you've never been to the remote cabin with us, this cabin is on 15 acres. Uh, it is it is riverfront essentially, as soon as we clear a path to the river and uh, build a dock. We do have a well here on the property too. It is an artesian well. Uh, someone's gonna tell me I pronounced that wrong and that's okay, I might have, but that essentially means you don't need a pump. The water just continues to come up, so it's pretty awesome. We don't have a well pump. We don't have any electricity out here. This cabin is completely off grid, but we have constant running water when we need it. Uh, fresh, delicious water, which you can't get anything better than that when you get out here in the sticks like this. We do have a really big outhouse. I showed you guys that last time, <clears throat> but just in case you're new, I'll show you the potty room. So here's the outhouse. It's actually a really big outhouse. Half of it is the outhouse. The other half of this building is like a little storage shed with kind of a countertop, almost like a shop area where Joe keeps the generator and all the things for the cabin. Hello, old friend. How are you? There she is. That's the outhouse. You can hear that water running from the well over there. Tell you one thing about all this tall brush, I sure am glad we don't have snakes here. <laughs> and for the most part, ticks. Ticks are pretty much only found in certain regions of Alaska, and you typically only find them on animals like squirrels and wild hares. You don't really find them like on the bushes like we did in Virginia. In Virginia, if you walk through brush like this, you would be covered in ticks by the time you came out of it. So I'm really grateful for that and really grateful we don't have snakes. Flip side is we've got big bears out here, but hopefully. Hopefully you would see it coming or hear it coming and you've got a way to protect yourself. So I'll take the bears over the snakes any day. Try. Yeah. Want to go down to the boat and get that last box and then come have lunch. Yeah. And maybe you could mow a little bit if you wanted to. Yeah. So this is the loft bedroom. So 
So this cabin has this massive oil heater. It's like the size of one of the old school televisions, right? So our plan, once the oil runs out, because we still have half a tank of oil for this thing, no sense in not using it up. After it's used up, we're gonna be putting in a wood burning stove here in this corner. We smell something dead over here, so. <laughs> Might be like a dead mouse, Joe, you think? Can you help me lift this off? All right, we just finished another trip down the trail back to the boat, bringing the items that we want to take back home with us that we don't want to leave at the cabin. And now we're taking a little load up to the cabin that we plan on leaving here. I can't even imagine the day that James and Joe came out here and cleared that trail. And they did about six trips to take all the stuff up for that 4th of July weekend. I mean, it's, it's quite the haul. And there's several big old trees you got to jump over, but very very cool to be out here today i am so thankful that the mosquitoes as one lands on my wrist are almost non-existent i'm guessing it's from the heat i don't really know they don't like the sunshine even at the the main cabin so it's just a beautiful serene day so unbelievably quiet out here like this is how you get away from the crazy people you know what i'm saying this is how you do it. You come out to a place like this because they don't want to come out here, most of them. You know, they like the convenience of being in town and drive throughs and freeways and all that stuff. And they wouldn't want to go through this to get out to a place like this, but I would. <laughs> you bringing this out here? Yeah, we could bring that and leave it. I have several more at home. It'd be good to have some sunscreen out here. Want me to carry those snow boots, Joe? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to tie them and tie them to my waist. Got a little moose poop. Moose poop all over up here. You're gonna have to leave me here. Why? I'm the one that's keeping you alive though. <laughs> We're almost back to the cabin. Joe cut a nice little trail here. Still can't believe he cut all this. No wonder he was dog tired that night when he got home. You're eating all the blueberries. Thought you said they weren't ripe yet. The fat ones are. <laughs> Let me try one when you find another one. Ooh, you gotta, you gotta go fast though. When you stop, those skeeters gather around. Hey. Oh, there's a whole bush of them. Blueberries. Definitely not ripe yet. Ooh. It almost tastes like a grape right now, but not sweet like a grape. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's Gunner. Gunner keeps taking off in the bushes. And when he comes back, we can't see him. Sounds like a bear. Got cranberries, blueberries, rose hips. Bless you. <laughs> All kinds of berries out here. It's awesome. Well, we're just sitting here chilling on the front porch, letting the cabin air out a little bit. I don't know what that smell was, but I don't really smell anymore, do you? I don't know. Maybe it was the food, because we did find a bag of something that we brought out here, and I can't even tell what it was anymore because it's like fermented, and so it was probably that, because it was just in a Ziploc baggie, so we got rid of that, airing out the cabin a little bit, and now we're having a delicious, healthy, filling lunch. 
It is delicious. It's all good. It'll fill the tummy before we hit this river home. How beautiful is this weather today? I don't even want to leave. Like if we had brought the boys, Joe, I would have stayed. You know what I'm saying? It's just so beautiful. So we're definitely gonna have to come back out with the boys. Now that we know we can get here safely, now that I know we can get here safely, um, I definitely wanna come out before summer is over and spend a good three, four, five days out here with them for sure. Clear all this brush, let the boys run around, have fun, go down to the river and do some fishing. We have all five species of salmon that run this river, um, pike, and uh, so I definitely wanna, definitely wanna fish this river when we can. And we have a lot of stuff that we want to do to the cabin. You know, we just, we, we don't have time on this trip, you know. Lexi's got to work tomorrow and she's got the boys. So we have to head home here in a little bit. But next time we come out, maybe we can get some of that done, huh, Joe? Maybe. Yeah. Just like organizing and like making it the way we want it. You going to take a nap, Joe? Doing that. <laughs> Got a full belly, soft breeze on our skin. Gunner said, I'm taking a nap. <laughs> He's passed out. Look at that view. So beautiful out here. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful day. I'm pretty sure these cup of noodles are from like the 1930s. These were here from the previous owner. I didn't know that until I started eating it. Joe just told me that. I mean, it's all dehydrated, right? Or freeze dried, whatever. So it should be fine, but it's not very good. You know, you know the stuff that's not good for you normally tastes really good, like Oreos, Top Ramen, that kind of stuff. Normally, huh? There's Oreos on the boat. We have Oreos here? On the boat now. Oh, I think, you know, I think since we made it here safely, that's call for celebration. <laughs> but normally cup of noodles, I know they're not good for you, but they normally taste good, right? They're salty and the broth is good. This one, not so much. Tastes really just like water. Yeah, no. I was telling Joe we need to bring the sheep out here. He's going to get that mower going and mow some of this, but... Said we should just bring the sheep out on the boat one day and let them have a field day out here. They'd love all this grass. I'm so glad I came. I almost didn't come. We take one really big river and two smaller rivers to get to the cabin. Once we got on the two smaller rivers, I was anxiety was gone. Like, cause the bank is like right there. If something happened, I know I could get to that bank. You know what I'm saying? The current is very little, but the big river, it scares me a little bit. Not gonna lie, we passed so many sandbars. I mean, huge sandbars with tree stumps and logs on them. And those ones, you know, you can see them. So you can easily avoid them. But the ones like the one we hit last time, we tried to come out, it's underwater and you don't see it until it's too late. So it is scary, but once we got on a littler, littler rivers, the side rivers, I was like, oh, I could do this. I could do this all day long. So I'm really glad I came, overcame my fear. So now we've got to plan a trip to bring the boys out here. You know, in the winter time, if you guys missed that video, I'll link it for you. We came out on the snow machines in the winter and had a blast. We spent like four days out here and the boys sled the entire time. This cabin sits up on a hill and this entire hill goes all the way down to the river and the boys were sledding that hill all day, every day that we were out here and they just had a blast. But with summer comes a totally different, uh, what y'all gonna, a totally different terrain, right? So they can build a little, a little fort out here. They can go berry picking, they can go down and go fishing. And I think it would be really fun for them to come out here. And if we only get to have Callan for a year, which we don't know, uh, if we're going to be able to keep him yet beyond that year, that's up to his family. And we went into this with Kellen knowing that it might only be a year. But if it is, I want to bring him out here this summer at least once so that he can experience this in the summertime. <laughs> All right, Joe, got a lot of mowing to do. <laughs>
I cleaned up a little bit, got the counter cleared off. Got supplies stacked away. 1930s cup of noodles. Got some extra coffee cups out here for next time. So many gifts that you guys have given us. We've brought out to the cabin. Someone gave us this adorable little calendar. So we decided to hang it in the cabin. At least next time we come out, it won't just be a complete mess like it was when we got in here today. Joe's still outside kind of clearing some of the grass away and we've got everything put away here in the cabin. So we're probably gonna load up here soon and head back home to get the boys. I don't wanna leave. I don't wanna leave. Every time we come out here, I don't wanna leave. What a perfect date day without the kids though. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I wanna go on a date, this is my kind of date. That's what I cleared the trail with that day. Oh, really? Well, you got a lot cleared around the cabin. Looks like they had like a little dock out here to get water. Maybe we can set that back up. Because in the winter time, the snow is like four, five, six feet high. And then it creates like this little cave in here where the water runs down. And we almost fell in it last winter because you can't really see it. So repurposing this little dock slash bridge might be a good idea at some point. criteria for a, an off-grid remote cabin was it had to have a water source because it's hard enough as it is pulling in all these supplies when you come up here I wasn't trying to haul water so that well is just that's amazing guys I think we're all packed up and ready to go thanks for coming with us out to the remote cabin I'm really glad that we made it out I'm really glad that we came today and it was just such a beautiful day to come out here weather wise so hopefully we'll get out here again this summer for a longer period of time with the boys for a little camping trip I think they'd really enjoy that but before it gets too late Joe and I are gonna hit the river go pick up the boys and head home yep I'm good
Joe, you have to get up, Joe. Joe, we can't build an addition like this. <laughs> Joe, wake up, Joe. We got work to do. Yeah! Yeah! It's Watson's coming through! Coming through! Told you I'd save your life, Joe. You don't have nothing to be worried about. All right? Oh my God, that scared me. I saw it in my camera and I said, that's a bear right there. <laughs> it's just a tree stump. Woo, woo.